afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Heroes like Defender of the Fatherland. Wood off here to a one versus one on the map West Wall. Between the West, we got Stefan BK fighting here for Germany, Deutschland. The Oberkommando West forming up the 12th SS Panzer Division Hitler Jürgen versus in the East. We got Papio Daniel fighting for America, freedom, and democracy here for the 19th Infantry Division, holding out against the storm of the German army. We've got here Special Operations Scavenge and Breakthrough versus Tactical Support Armor Company and Heavy Cavalry with all infantry bulletins on both sides. So no surprises there. We got right from there. Full gun is here. Kubank following up there for Stefan. So pretty standard starts there from both players. Sturm Pioneer is heading more towards the center. Folks will probably then head towards the fuel point. Secure that for the fatherland. Kubelbagen almost done. And we got here Pappy actually dispatching on Rifeman pretty swiftly here to secure the fuel point right here without any troops immediately sort of re actually connecting the fuel point. The Vrishan squad fact been sent on a rather longer route through the southern territories here towards the missions point there, I assume. More Rifeman arriving there for Pappy or Daniel. Kubelbagen heading Norfoots. And we got Fulkers digging down Sandbags here by the fuel point. Bit of cheese wire here from uh, Stefan to deny them access to a fence and some barrels. Ground with a point here by the center. Behind the regular team, a knocked out Sherman with a bulldozer's edge to it. Almost got the core point there and then almost got the fuel point at the same time. The south points have been grabbed, but we're meaning he can get both at the same time. Thus, there's opposed more quickly getting that one and feeling he's got less time wasted. But at the same time, he could probably get a bit of fuel out by grabbing just this one soon at plus munitions. So, hard to say that would have been the most efficient, though. Right, moving up towards the northern victory point here, Kubank's using territory. Heading towards the southern victory point here with the Fultz Gunners. We got more out there, but we also got tech up there for Stefan. And it's Fels SS. Moving ahead here, more cheese wire there on the Sherman wreckage. Grabbing points there. So far, not a single shot has been fired here. They've just been sort of grabbing territory here now. I mean, obviously, this ball is also bigger maps, unless this is both deciding you know, to rush one point. There's plenty of time to sort of do that. And there we go, Riesens opening up in the full span of years. Setting up sandbags. I'm not sure why he's doing it like that, because the problem is that it also allows his opponent to use the sandbags if he then occupies the house, which is a bit of an odd thing. He'd be better off just setting up like here, I think, that way he can cover here better, and it could have been utilised to get, but, you know, his first point. But again, he might be waiting about his opponent having the house, but at the same time, my first, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, if you're really worried about the house, I think he should lay down sandbags here. That way, he could have just easily up shoot it. In the centre, we got Rafa opening up, we got Fultz going to Stuart Pioneers there, we got more. Units occupying the house, denying the seven entrance towards that area and the call point. Strong part taking loss, but they've arrived and ultimately pushed back here with the severe faith in the fatherland. Battle complete quarters probably going to be set up here close to the front line by Stefan, setting up a full retreat point. So there we go, there'll be a full retreat point with medics and all that follows there. He could lay down some mines here. Make it harder for some from Pappy to move on that point here. West side, it's not really seeing any action there from uh, Stefan. He's just focusing center west here so far. Well, east side's not seeing any action. Anyways, still punished with Riechland and one carbine sitting out there. In the center, we got right moving up there. Fulkers needs to get into cover there behind some of the rubble here of some crashed tank traps. As he's trying to. Riechland's yes, pushed back here, but the Sturm Pioneers, but not before they got another kill. The Sturm Pioneers there. Ludwig is taught. Right, we're getting here the Fulks gonna do We got the cool button up to port, but the Fulks will have to retreat. This is where mine could have been handy there for uh, Stefan. Might have slowed down Papio Daniels push towards the center point a bit. Belko Pet Cord is almost done. We got more Fulks there for him. We got a lieutenant out here for Papi, who's quick to follow up with an M20 there. It's definitely less than usual American play. I mean, versus the Baumark, some players do prefer Lieutenant M20, but versus the Upper Commander Vest, this is definitely not what you'd usually see from an American player, so. Uh, it's definitely interesting play there from Papi or Daniel. So Nels allowed to pressure a bit faster and overall possess more firepower versus Stefan's infantry. And if he's going for battle group headquarters like it is, I mean, he's not having to worry about Luxus or Pumas, meaning it's over a pretty solid choice there. I mean, obviously, the flak half track could give a bit of a headache, but at the same time, a flak half track isn't quite the same on the same level as the Lux, though. So that kind of works out there. Fultz is occupying a house here. I think Stefan should consider himself either flat calf track on MG34. Also with an M20 hitting out there. Pantrashek on the Sturm Pioneers would not be a bad thing either. Grafner holding up the sun point there. Fultz is moving up. Lieutenant moving towards the victory point here. Kubelwagen back at base there for repairs while the Fultz is reinforcing. Got a full engagement. We've got Lieutenant moving up to port here. 
Rifleman, ah, there we go, pushed away. Lieutenant moving up there, quite quickly falls back. He's realizing he's going to be pretty bad to move across from ground against Germans in cover. Good idea there by Pabin, set falls back to us, meaning he wants to move on the victory point. He's going to have to cross the towards terrain there. At the same time, we're going to flank here, but let's quickly hold here with an incendiary grenade, pushing the rifle back out into the open ground, into the snow. And there we go, we got the M20 up there for Pappy O'Daniels. 50 cover there, mounted on top, armored skirts added. Ambulance following up there for Papio Daniel and the 19th Infantry Division. Point there being seized. Wagon Stuart Pioneers moving out. And we got field medics on the way. Yes, and Swiss Fultz going to lose. Cool Wagon moving in. Sam Max down there. Yes, and pushed away. Also, fun fact the 19th Infantry Division was basically made up of the worst great troops the US Army had. Another fun fact is generally the US infantry never got the best recruits. That was generally the Air Force, the armored units, and everything else, basically. Infantry got the last pick, essentially, if you will. There's a little fun detail there as well. Grab here, though, there's a Swartz kind of is moving up there, taking hits there from the M1 Garans. Sandbags up here further, just to further prepare positions. Send, well, send your grenade off, they're getting good hit on the rifle, pushing them out there, but the fuel point has nonetheless been rendered neutral. And at the same time, there's not been really much harassment from Stefanich towards the opponent's territories. We got the M20 moving about here still. I don't think he's laid down any mines with it, he could consider that. Stuart Pioneers with a Panzer Shrek here. Overall, I'm seeing more Orbital Command West places. Overall, investing in Panzer Shreks from the Stuart Pioneers, which generally works out for them. Following four over upgraded Battle Group headquarters here. Might want to take up soon. And obviously, I think also might want to consider maybe some, again, machine guns. And MD 35, I think, could do a lot to help control Papi Daniel's infantry here and there. There you go. Caught here out in the open. Quickly falling back towards safer position. Cool bag not rolling back. We got there. Papio Daniels men's moving forward. Supported here by the M20. And we got a dark tall choice here. It is tactical support for Papio Daniel. Opening up for grounding up machine guns, half tracks, air support, and calliopes. Overall, 70 a bit on the back foot against Papio Daniel. So far, swinging pretty hard there. And the M20 certainly helping them control the map a bit. Good hit there from the Patrick on the M20, though. Fultz coming up on a try and panther faster. Stuart Pioneers are taking loss of Ducey retreat there towards the fort retreat point. Fultz is seeing reinforcing, or he should be. Noting no assault weapons equipped so far for any of Stefan's truppen. In the south, you got the lieutenant here back in the house with the BAR and the Thompson. Rage of guard against any crowds. Mines moves up here. He's obviously worked from uh, any mines that Stephen might have laid down, or Stefan. But so far, Stefan has laid to lay down even a single Schumine. Troops are reinforcing. A Kedner F out to help deal with the M20. But interesting enough, there's been no sign of the MD34 to help keep the infantry under control. Definitely think Stephanie should go for at least one MD34. Up north, though, successfully grabbing here. Sam Max dug in already. Rifle moving force there across the broken ground. And down south here for Lieutenant versus Fultz. Going to this, he's got at least one more squad here to assist. But a really good incendiary grenade. Otherwise, the Lieutenant will clear out the Fultz. Going to this end in a matter of moments. Up here, Stuart Pine is the cool bank support doing what they can. Fultz moving down there. Other squad retreating. Doctoral choice here might soon have up Stefan. I mean, he could go for Panzer for Sleers or an officer to assist that way. you again to think a bit of advantage there versus him, or he could, I suppose, go scavenge, but uh, everybody does that, and that's kind of boring, but uh, that's just me. So far, nice on that. Pappy, of course, could right here go for a half track to that way, support his troops on the front line a bit more, would give him more pressuring ability and make him harder for Stefan to push off. Would also allow him to quickly swing his forces back and forth, of course. This is otherwise pretty big map. He's also part me that wishes the Orbital Command West actually had some transports. That will probably help Stefan a bit here, of course. But anyway, so I think Southford's there towards the southern victory point. Victory points wise, a bit of a lead there to Papio Daniel over Stefan so far. Bit of Rasmus going back up north there. Fultz is opening up there with their M oh, Car 98 case on the Rifen, but we've got the M20 there to the rescue with its 50 cal machine gun. In the center, they're slowly pushing forward, Rifen bleeding out as the Germans increase the pressure. The Kedna for ready to support. And we got another truck on the way there for seven. That's probably going to be the Schwer Punted quarters. And I wager he'll be trying to set up around here the fuel point to prevent it from being harassed by Papio Daniel and the 19th Infantry Division. Here, healing reinforcement. We got Tech up here. 50 cal, by the way. And then he's going for the Major at the same time. Papio Daniel definitely not playing the usual American game, which is always nice and refreshing to see. Perhaps he's seeing the writing on the wall, that there's something happening there. Or perhaps he's just feeling like, you know, it's kind of boring and wants to do something else, which is also quite admirable. We got some Browning Light machine guns handed out there. This version, I believe, was actually an attempt to sort of mirror the uh, LMG 42 as much as possible. This is more hand ability. In fact, it's more of a pistol grip, so it's more easy to use. Little fun fact there. 
Oh, and that should give Stefan a bit of a problem there. We got Mines going down, Kulbang spotting ahead there. Really, he should consider though an MD34. Instead, he's actually going for more full gun ideas. I definitely think an MD34 there would have helped uh, Stefan a lot more here versus Papio Daniel. But go figure, Kulbang needs to be careful. In the south there, Fulks goes with the M20 utility car, which is closing in the Venture one Looks like Papio Daniel is not going to bother with a half track. A bit disappointed in that, but you know, would have been nice to see. Personally, a fan of mechanized infantry tactics. Which is also a bit of a, again the occasion where just finding the Obel Commanders feels a bit silly. Again, they're based on the Adens Force, but there's no mechanized infantry play. Trenty moving up there. Kubang fixed up. Aked needs to be careful that moving about just so easily. Might be able to get a hit. There's two on Pioneers. Get off a pantry hit. Set up by Aked now. Slow, slow. Almost got it there, almost! And there goes Smog Pops, the Empire's Neutral Retreat before they get cut down here by the Brennan, or the Light Machine Guns, they probably still, might still be. Fultz finding in the centre, interesting to note, he's not upgraded a single Fultz Squad with the Stroke Rifles, despite, you know, that'll probably help a lot there with the Papio Daniels Infantry as well, so... He's not really, I think, been prioritising uh, Papio Daniels Infantry very highly, and this is proving to be... Unsurprisingly, a bit of a bad idea. But we got the Shrap Panzer Quartz going up there, we got a bit of harassment moving about down in the south. Mine went off there, killing the Major in one aid, leaving only one man behind. Before he retreats back here, healing enforcement. We've also got sandbags here. So, more easily defend in case his position gets attacked. The problem is, though, with tactical support, there's a Calliope down the road, which could actually make this kind of position pretty dangerous, since it's not a lot to actually absorb the fire. And there we go, Brace is getting halted here by the first seminal flag down the Shrap Hunter Quarters rear end, and there we go. M20 utility car takes another hit there from the Kednefer. 50 cover fire there supporting the advancing rifleman here. And North got a bit of harassment there in the cemetery. Pushed away there from the, the enemy is overrunning western fuel point. point. Some Obersland would also think be a neat choice here for Stefan. With a light machine gun, he could certainly think pressure Papio down a lot more and, you know, try and bleed him out that way. Back here, healing reinforcement going on there for Mr. Papi. M20 being fixed up, we got rifle screen towards the centre again here under the watchful eyes of the 50 car machine gun crew and Stem's going to be attacking into that. I think at this point Stem should probably consider more flanking it, trying to attack him from other angles instead of you know, attacking straight into the 50 car machine gun which tends to be in the very bad idea department. Kuban there getting blasted. Finally got some assault rifles up there by like four Stefan. Getting caught here by machine gun fire from several sources. Trying to hit the, hit the 50 caliber, but he's taking a lot of fire there from the 30 calibers and the 50 caliber on the M20. Ambulance slightly forward here by the southeastern house there at the crossroads. Rifle almost got the Fox gun it is there. Still on Pioneer's Fox attacking through here with assault rifles now that the 50 caliber is cleared out. The main assault can open up. Up north point being grabbed back by the Cooper Bargain. Ravnet taking a lot of losses, Fultz is almost wiped out, and we got a Sherman on the way here for Papi already. Kulbang though gets caught and knocked out here by the Lieutenant up north. Stefan still striking in the south though, here by the southern defensive post. Fultz is moving ahead there, Stuart Pine is forced to find desperately in the south, Ravnet there moving into assault rifle fire, and unsurprisingly suffering quite a few casualties. God damn it, they got Joe. Yes, yeah, certainly some heavy fighting here, intense fighting around the center there between Stefan and Pappy. Stefan needs to be careful that he doesn't get too caught up and again forgets about the rest of the map. And he's finally here going for an MD-34. Again, I think a few MD-34s could have done a lot here in helping control Pappy or Daniel, giving more room to actually harass and push back across the map with and maybe, you know, gaining better map control. Again, without the MD-34s, he's rather been struck here against Pappy's rather nimble, I think, aggressive tactics. Well, the final here, we got more rifle pushing forwards, but an MD-34 should help him maintain a bit of a stronger presence. In particular, I think if you lace up some sandbags here, you can think of a, a pretty potent position. There you go, more harassment here. You got those Sherman running here for the 19th Infantry Division. Moving up there. 50 cover on the way there. Fox the need to retreat, though. They're taking too much uh, 30 cover fire there. Pappy's men have been heavily equipped there. In the south, the Fultz has been gated by the Sherman. Push back. He's got one Stuart Pioneer, one Panther to deal with that. He could go for the Sherman or Yak Panther first. He could try, be a bit patient, try and wait for the Panther. And then that way, you know, challenge Pappy a bit here, in particular since he doesn't have any sort of, you know, immediate access to stuff like Pershings. I mean, that could work out, though, of course, he's Panther 4, but help versus the infantry more. Might help him a bit more that way. Need to be careful about moving about like kid never too much. Flanking going on here. MD34 would benefit a lot from some sandbags around there, but uh, 
So far, no sign of that. Strion Pani is out in the open. A quick suppressed here. Fifth cover back at it for Papio Daniel. Follows something about this. Some upgrades. We've got a bit of flanking around here by the lieutenant. Going for the call point behind Stefan's back. Very bold and nice move there by Papio Daniel here. McKenna okay, getting good hit on the Sherman. Rifle pushing forward here slowly but surely. MG34 doing what it can. But the problem is again with that much cover. And again, no cover for the MG34. Does risk getting wiped out there if he's not careful. He's close to the Panzer IV though. And that's probably going to end up what he's going for in the first place, which is probably going to be the sensible choice as long as he doesn't do anything, you know, silly with it. A nice flank around here could help out, but of course, that's the Sherman there covering up, and we've also still got the M20 there acting as another flank guard. There goes Fair Punch, of course, gives some hits on the M20. Troops being suppressed in the center. MG34 gaining veteran to one. And acting close enough here to the Belgrade headquarters to reinforce. That's actually pretty impressive. Can't quite tell there, but. Uh, Nice setup there by Stefan. He might have some training there and how far you can actually get it away there. Academy after cleared up by Sherman hit plus machine gun fire there. Vetchi 2 on the 50 cal, but definitely bad news. He's even popping armor piercing runs, which by the way gives an overall damage bonus, meaning it all becomes better versus infantry firing those rounds. So really nasty work there by Pappy. Harassment in the south there again. Stefan is just so caught up in the center of the map now. It doesn't really you know perceive much of the rest there where Pappy's just sort of pushing forward and grabbing everything else. The Sturm Pioneers, though, are Veteran 3, which means quick rope right to Veteran 4 and Veteran 5, which will make them quite better infantry and give Pappy there a bit of a problem. Pulse is up north here, quick incendiary grenade would help out a bit, plus more support from the infantry, but uh, he's going to have to retreat tre pretty quickly, a bit slow there with the incendiary grenade, the Brandhand Granate. Need to get some troops up there, but they're all busy reinforcing and healing. Quickly pushing through the cemetery up north, Fulks is here by the northern defensive post. Uh, might want to get into cover there. Looks like he's not quite paying attention. Panther on the way there for Stefan and the 12th SS. Falls out in the open, getting blasted there by light machine gun fire. And he just hits retreat by there, which I think is a sensible choice here. Sherman strike in the center there. Still on Pioneer's suppressed. A lot of action going on here. M20 there standing about. No repairs and no mines. And certainly no half track there for Papi O'Daniel. Sherman moving ahead. MG34 Sturm Pines there taking losses from the Sherman. Need to reinforce the Sturm Pines. There we go. Got a hit there on the Sherman before retreating. Panzer 4 almost done there for Stefan. Almost there. They'll have a Panzer Kampfwagen which challenge those army Tommy Cookers. There we go. Sturm Pines at quarters opening up the rifle. Moving up there trying to flank him. Okay, needs to get away again. Oh, it's going to get wiped once more. Boss is trying to reinforce. A lot of pressure here. Needs to pull off, I think, a good flank with the Panzer 4 here. And we got air strifing run against his positions here around the Belgian group headquarters. Wipes of Fultz going to just walk. Really nasty pressure here by Pappy. Really nasty punishing here for this kind of setup. Fultz was at the church. 50 cub advancing. Got Panzer forming in from the north. Strikes at the Sherman. Gets a good hit there. And he's got only the Sherman if actually now to sort of deal with the Panzer IV. So there's a good chance here. This. There we go. Main gun out, meaning. There's now nothing that can stop the Panzer IV. Smoke down there, but he gets the Sherman, and the Sherman crew dies. But the Sherman is still operable. Jackson on the way, though. Troops again caught with the spare punch course, grabbing like head and effort. Still on is reinforcing. Panzer IV going back here, pushing back the troops. I don't think Pappy is aware, though. He's lost the Sherman here, connecting his opponent, can grab it and turn against him. Jackson is on the way there for Pappy, rather than getting blasted by the Panzer IV. And it's 75mm high explosive rounds. And a crash machine gun. So a lot of losses here, but with the Sherman, there's a definitely think a good chance here of Stefan sort of really turning the game around versus Pappy. It's time here though for the mid-game analysis in terms of damage. Stefan's ahead kills-wise, though Pappy's actually quite ahead there. Overall, more aggressive tactics, a lack of machine guns from Stefan, plus overall two slow upgrading since we were again. Pappy actually went for machine gun before Stefan. Also went for a lot more sort of heavy infantry engagements with the lieutenant, but also just rifling with brandy like machine guns that way overall. Ratching up the pressure against Stefan again, lacking any means to really stop it. Much more to the defense, but in this case, also just suffering a lot more versus Pappy's. I mean, really, a few sort of tactical strategic mistakes that I think sort of costing a bit here in terms of army value, though. Pappy's sort of been racing ahead again, taking advantage of the larger map control, but just also been able to get his men faster ahead. There, he's just you know leaving Stefan a bit behind. Though again, he's got the Panther Four, and if you get the Sherman up, it's going as well. That could be a huge sort of movement there. Resource float-wise, pretty close. Points held. 
Pappy's over been getting control again. Stefan, I think A felt a bit too easily on defense. We got to focus on the center of the map, not so much on the other map points, in particular not the fuel point. But also I think a lack of machine guns again has given uh, Pappy or Daniel a lot more sort of overall map control here. So that's definitely something they need to fix up on. But basically, get that Sherman, get it running. Get another MG-34 as soon as possible to help you know, establish more certain some control versus Papio Daniel's infantry. And then I think you should actually try and set up for a Panther something bigger there. That way, aiming for armor supremacy with the Panther IV. Sherman dealing with infantry. The Panthers are really trying to dominate vehicles and armor. And that will just establish something that can soak up more fire. After that, he should begin aiming for orbital Darden with light machine guns. That way, further adding pressure. But he also needs to harass. He needs to sort of hit more there against the other points. He needs to be less concerned with the center at the moment. Because it's bleeds out a lot then he's that means he can't really remove out and do anything with the rest of the map allowing pappy to build up a larger map sort of control there so again he needs to try and grab the rest of the map get less folks he needs to allow max to have the victory point here try and go for the other victory points the fuel points but also just trying to flank you know out maneuver you know try and hit him through here for example or through here instead of just trying to engage him around here where there's also a lot of cover for pappy downers men to hang about in so the more you can do that, the better. As for Pavio Daniel, I mean, he's overall doing pretty well. He's got the map there. He's overpressuring Stefan. He's got him the defensive. He's got armor. He's not just relying on call-ins. I mean, overall, there's not really much to say about there. I mean, Papio Daniel is overall playing pretty splendidly here. And overall, I mean, he's just doing as well as he can. I think he could launch some bigger flanks there. Maybe try and hit the three punch quarters. Lay down some smoke screens while attacking. Maybe get out some mortars. But, you know... I mean, overall, still got a pretty good lead. Then he's overall dictating the shots here against Stefan. Again, Stefan needs to break that. And again, the Sherman, I think, offers him the best opportunity for that if he handles it correctly. Panther 4 rolling ahead of the rest of the army here. Needs to be careful of that. Mr. Stefan, 4 6. Sherman, there we go. Good to go. The enemy has cut our supply chain. Fun fact about this, uh, during the follow-up operation to, the, you know, the fighting in the Ardennes operation Nordwind, they actually managed to capture an entire company's worth of Sherman tanks from the Americans because basically there was no infantry support properly for the tank crews, the infantry units had been depleted, so they used engineers to work with them, and then once the engineers sort of ran off, got killed, the tank crews basically bailed on the tanks, handing over to the, I think, 10th SS, an entire company's worth of Sherman tanks, which the SS pretty sort of roundhandedly took, graciously took. Little fun fact there, but I'll wait Sherman there up and going soon here for Stefan, giving him certainly the arm advantage over Pappy. Now, of course, the question is can he actually utilize said arm advantage versus Pappy? Otherwise, it's going to be all for naught here. We turn it under fire from the Sherman, 50 car, but high close rounds there. But victory point was also to do something then again, you know, less focus on this. We've got the Jacks moving up, open up there, hits the Panther 4, Lieutenant almost wiped out. He could probably try and rush the jack there, Gold's got Kedmer for moving in there, so that's probably going to have to halt, but again, try and grab the rest of the map there, Stefan. Jack's moving ahead here towards the centre, Fox is moving up. Fixing up the Schwer Punched Quarters. Pushing back the Jackson a bit, Sherman moving up. Jackson misses, but Kedmer for the gets off a hit there on the Sherman, Pantherform towards the centre. Jackson shoots again, misses. There's quite a few misses there from the tank destroyer. MG-34 moving up in the south, victory point there secured. We've got a bit of northern movement there as well from some other folks gonna do is. But he's still putting much of his attention so far in the centre, so trying to hit him from other angles, you know, trying to outmaneuver him. Also looks like he's finally going around to repairing the entrenty. Of course gets pushed back. Panther being fixed up there for the invention to force John Pine's got him up to the Sherman. Rather pushing through there. Channel under fire there, Panther Von getting the Jackson but misses. He's covered those jump on, he's trying not to repair under fire. Ah, uh, Stefan, 4 6 9. We are a bit too late, the damage engine and the Sherman need to pull back here. Another option instead of the Panther could just be a Yak Panther. Oh, it's something you can aid challenge American armor a bit more severely in this case, specifically the Jackson. MD 4 needs to get back here in the south. With progress of north is always getting back to the map there. So Steph is slowly turning things around. But again, he needs to be a bit, you know, a bit more wise in his handling of armor, trying to repair you. But again, need to go for the steel pioneers. Can't afford to lose those. Damage engine on the Panther Four. We've still got the Jackson nearby. He needs to get some anti tank weapons with that. He actually needs to use the steel pioneers for that. In which case, he might actually want to consider another steel pioneer squad for now. Another hit on the shun for the Jackson. Closing intervention to one. Need to pull back the armor. In fact, consider laying down a smoke screen instead. 
He's going straight forward, he's going straight forward, he's being pretty brazen here, Betson's one for the Sherman, laying down a smoke screen in front of the Jackson, trying to escape here, Panther 4 with Sherman, support there, Shoot's being suppressed here by the MG Fed 4, Falls has been forcing, Falls being from the south here, Jackson, oh, close, but not quite there, Sturm Pani is taking losses, but they are reinforcing, grabbing the northern victory point there. Panther Fall must down, Fulton's moving up, needs a Panther Faust here. Sherman just needs to get fixed up as well. He needs more Sturm Pioneers. He's got too few here at the moment. Panther Fall, down. Fulton's moving up with a Panther Faust. Need to get that Sherman fixed. Too late with the Panther Fall there. Should have just tried to pull it back here from the front line instead of hanging about there. Calliope now finding way at the Fort Retreat Point. Basically bad news there, almost wiping out his units. Actually gets the MD crew again. Force trying to flank in from the north, not bad, not bad. Just a bit late here doing all of this. Rifle holding up here in the house. A lot of rifles running up machine guns actually. M20 moving in there. Catch fair Panther the quarters fire on it. He's going for another Panther 4. I do think that's it's not a good decision here. I mean, he needs something that can soak up a few more hits. In particular with the tactics he's playing, a Panther 4 does feel like an awkward choice. But again, you know, he wants to kill that Jackson, possibly in this Calliope here. So in that regard, a Panther would be a bit better. Plus, they'll allow him to just use the Sherman here for just murdering infantry with high close rounds. So I think that will offer an overall better role distribution there for Stefan. Something again, they can apply more pressure to the infantry. Well, again, having something to sort of more aggressively deal with the armor while also having a bit better survivability, which is clearly a bit of an issue here for Stefan. But it seems like, again, he's very keen on the Panzer IV here. Bazooka there left behind, by the way. He's actually upgraded his lieutenant with the bazooka as well, plus the major forming up several sort of anti-tank teams in different ways. But crapped it back there. Need to pull back the Sherman here. Panther 4 out here for Stefan. Got the M20 coming up north here. Veteran flee on the 5th caliber already. Bad news there as well for Stefan. And he's now beginning to lose map control there in the north too. Pappy once more. So I'm trying to do a bit of support here. Jackson moves up again. So Jump has pushed back. So that means he's got not a lot there to cover up. I mean, he could try and flank, you know, with the Panther 4. A good armoured flank there could do a lot there versus Pappy, but we'll have to see there what he ends up doing with the Panther 4. Plus, he still needs to get the Sherman Alton fully all working order there. Almost got the M20. 50 cover, they're holding up the Fulks there with the Bazooka. And the Sulfur Kedna for screwing forwards. Calliope Barrage again here against the enemy 34 position. Almost got the M20, another Panther Fast going to go down. Oh, pops up the crew. Looks like he's ignoring it actually. In the south, this Sherm tries to break through. Steel Pioneers gaining veteran fire more to get an effort. Good hit, they could knock it up. Panther fast it, Panther 4 moving in. Almost got it. We've got a lot of troops nearby. Need to be careful. There you go, got the Jackson. Pull back, pull back, Stefan. Nine, pull back. John Kett, uh, ignore the collapse. Scheiße. He forgot about all. No, he sent in the Sherman as well. What are you doing, Stefan? Ah! The Suk is inside the house. It's a trap. And he fell right for it. Well, it became a trap there. And lastly, he loses all of his armor. Why did he have to go and do that? That made no sense. Did you just pull back? And sometimes one of the most important skills of armor fighting in coming here is just knowing when not to engage. And he went straight for it. And just traded something he couldn't afford to trade. I mean, sure, he got the Jacks and the Calliope, but... He couldn't afford losing the Panzer IV and the Sherman. Because Pappy still got a sizable infantry force, whereas Stefan's got naught. I mean, he just disengaged, repaired his tanks, he would probably over bled out uh, Pappy or Daniel here, but at this point, I mean, his chances of suddenly looking a lot more slimmer victory. Dude's being suppressed, though, he's going to need at least another MD34 to hold all of this up. Send the armor mouse against the 50 cal. He's actually called in a second 50 cal just to further increase his dominance versus Stefan's infantry. I mean, really sharp play there by Pappy. Just being suppressed there up north. Bit of small engagement soon. Enough. And we got more Sherman's there for Pappy. Still on trying to flank in there. Good work. But uh, still getting caught here by the bench. 50 cal. Oh! Barely make it past. Also trying to flank in. There we go, we got a sprint there on the 50 cover crew, trying to get away here, so Sturm Pioneers can continue the pursuit. A good concussive grenade here could save the day. If he remembers it to use it. Nope, since it's running nonetheless here. 
Remember those two on ponies do have a concussive grenade. Two being suppressed there. Reinforcing gun on the MG34 North Stefan. Sherman almost done for Pappy. Uh, Ravno, another full squad, but they're sort of back and forth here. Sherman ready. Pappy or Dan just keeping up. The map controller just harassing the flanks against Stefan. Another Sherman out there. We got a fuel cache up here. Just to further add to the resource there for Pappy. Build up further fuel advantage over Stefan. Good play there. Betty 2 on the MD34. Lieutenant being suppressed. Steel Pioneer, Spectre 25. 11 kills for the Fatherland. Going out, fully reinforced and refreshed. As much as they can be on the front line. Sherman moving up. 50 cover added. Trap Hunter support holding up some troops there on the flank slightly. We're trying to flank here the MD34. John Pine is moving from the north up here, Fultz is being suppressed, there's an M20 lying about there but he can't grab it. He's being holded here by the 5th Company machine gun now with 20 kills, that thing's really doing a lot of damage there to Stefan. He'll probably end up going for another Panther 4 here. Probably also makes more sense. Too late now I think for a Panther continuing the overall current state of things. The question is of course, will he handle that Panther 4 bit better than some of the previous ones? Standing about there, preparing for another assault against Stefan. BK's position here around the center. Sherman, take it fire. Jump up with the Panther checks and Bazookas getting Sherman down to half health. Jump on is being suppressed in the south. He got points have been grabbed by the Vietnamese. Vietnamese flee, by the way. Playing another flank here. MV34 space demanding the front line while the infantry then sort of tries to get behind. So do some damage that way. Of course, the problem is with two 50 cal machine guns. That's going to be a bit tricky there without any sort of armoured support or artillery support. And there we go, 150 cover holding basically the southern flank off. Again, I can't help but feel that Seven has gotten too overly focused in the centre of the map, basically suffering from tunnel vision. And that's allowed Pappy Daniel to wear him down again. The 50 cabs here turned out to be a really great decision for Pappy or Daniel. I mean, they're rarely utilized, but I do still think the 5th gun machine gun here is a pretty damn good heavy machine gun in the game. They could do a lot of damage and really punish infantry players who aren't careful with the troops. Lieutenant flanking up behind here, got incinerated off against the church, and there you go. Third Panther 4 there for Stefan and the 12th SS. Sherman the under game, the Falklands will get off a Panther fast, there, or Bazooka, not a Panther fast, before being run off by the Sherman. Lieutenant successfully repelled there. And in the center, still got the MD-34 here being reinforced again. Suppressing some Yankees and Southern Victory Point being secured. 100 Victory Points left here for Stefan. Looking pretty grim. Another Panther Fall was done there. Down for Stefan. There you go. Panther Victory on the Sherman. Heavy fires. Troops advancing across the... Oh, past the Dracula's teeth. As they know, these tank traps and these concrete blockages. Panther 4, they're arriving. A lot of machine gun fire. Definitely some uh, not very meta gameplay here from Papi or Daniel. I mean, the closest is probably the Calliope, and that's about it. Otherwise, he's actually used regular armor. He's used 50 cal machine guns. Browning light machine guns. He's over you know, for an There he goes, got the M20. The question is, can he get the M20 out of there? I don't think he can. In fact, he rushes it forward for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking there, but uh, he quickly loses the M20, rather begging the question, why did he recruit in the first place? Instead of getting off the 50 cup there, Panther 4 rolling forwards. Big cruise for Bazooka, Sherman, and we got the Kenner supporting as well. Panther 4 getting caught in a lot of fire there. Shots, though, mostly bounce off the Panther Force. Thick armor, folks moving up. 50 points left here. Again, two folks in the center there. Stefan, too focused. Another Kalibi bash there against Stefan BK. Every reconnaissance. Troops are taking heavy losses around the center. He might lose the Fox team in the Steel Pioneers. That'd be a huge loss there for Stefan. No, they survived barely. He fed for the being enforced. Troops have been suppressed. And the aircraft shut down. Crashing into and house collapsing that. Oh, 
Well, folks, kind of these for Stefan. And also, no doctrine at all for Stefan there, by the way. No doctrine at all. I guess he's just gotten completely focused and again on the center of the map. He can't even think of a doctrine to utilize. I actually didn't realize him that now, which also tells something about how much he got caught up in this fight as well. That's actually not a good sign either. He actually forgot about not getting a doctrine. That's kind of bad as well. Shot bounce off the Penta 4. 22 points left. Fifteen to press the Panther falling down. Pinned up machine gun not upgraded there. So we can hit you on there, take a hit from the Panther 4. Another hit there, bouncing off. Basically has to switch out to armor piercing round, which basically bounce means the high explosives are basically ineffective against the Panther 4. Two things to press there, two of all things to press as well. Lots of pressure fire all over the place. Air support in there from the US Air Force against Pappy of Stephanie's men. 14 points left. I mean, if he even had a bit of smoke there, he would just lay down the smoke around the, the victory point and just grab it, but uh, no smoke for Pappy. But at this point, it's, I think it's safe to say it's GG there, Steph, while fighting valiantly. I think he again suffered from some severe tunnel vision on the center of the map. They forgot about the rest of the map in many cases. And never really, you know, tried to launch any bigger flanking maneuvers. It was always just, you know, a bit through here, but never something even big. And certainly not with the tanks. Though, of course, the really big defining moment was basically with the Panther 4 and the Sherman captured. Basically throwing it all away there again. Had he been able to keep that alive, I think he could have won this. I think he could have won this. But instead, again, I'm not really sure what convinced them was a brilliant idea not to, you know, get his tanks wrecked there. I mean, you just threw it all away there, basically. Pretty hard. And there you go, Stefan leaves the match and game over. Loss here for Germany. A brutal fight, and very much sort of a war of attrition to an extent here. I mean, Papio Dan just doing a lot more damage to Stefan than Stefan did to him. Though Stefan was sort of slightly catching up, I suppose, damage was short a bit there, but ultimately, though, he just never really could get the kills. And in part, again, because he was just relying on frontal assaults here, again, he got too focused here. This part of the map, for some failures on the action, certainly not here either. I mean, he didn't, you know, try to harass his opponent much there. Didn't try to outmaneuver him, tried to catch him at different angles. I mean, he could, you know, try and maybe sneak up on the ambulance through here or here. I mean, that'd been a lot of options, but sadly, again, Stefan never really considered again. He was just too completely in love with the central victory point to realize, you know, there's a lot of the other map also, you know, to, you know, show interest in. Factoring then again, I think, you know, again, that second Panther 4 was a mistake. I think you should have gone for a Panther there. No orbs were done, which again would also have done a lot there for him. And obviously a doctor, I think, could also have done quite a bit there for Stefan. So there's sort of like several strategic mistakes, I think, for Stefan. Whereas Papi Daniel, while playing a bit unorthodox, but overall, I think, played a very solid USF game. Good use of tactics. Uh, could perhaps flank a bit more in some ways, but it'll make use of smoke. For his Shermans, I think a few times there, Calliope's infantry attacks, mages, we saw lieutenants, I mean, they'll really alter the 50 covers, the 50 covers I definitely think were a highlight there of uh, Papio Daniel's play, they really did a lot of damage there to Stefan overall, made it hard for him to move about on the battlefield as well, so really good choice there by Papio Daniel. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this match, hope you learned something from it, if you did want to subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone, and if you feel like supporting the propaganda cast, do consider donating, as this is what I try to do for a living, so every little donation can help. Links are in the video description. We can do so either Patreon or PayPal. Do consider doing donating. And this is Imperial Dane signing off and see you all tomorrow for another exciting episode. Cheers.